on China's support and money, it became known as China's second continent. The West took Africa's natural resources, but left her poor. Now, with China's massive support, African economies started to grow. With Chinese money came Chinese infrastructure projects, China's oil purchases, and China's armament sales. The African states needed money, infrastructure, and technology, all of which China had in abundance. China needed natural resources, which Africa had in plenty. It was a natural fit. Best of all, China did not interfere in the domestic affairs of African states, unlike the U.S., which had punished them with democracy. The countries that most benefited from their relationship with China were Angola, South Africa, Nigeria, Ethiopia, and Rwanda. African countries, which saw the world's highest growth rates, included Ethiopia, 11.9%, Ivory Coast, 10%, Djibouti, 9%, Rwanda, 8.5%, and Tanzania, 8%. Cecil Rhodes was an imperialist tycoon who dominated African business in the 19th century. He died leaving a fortune of six million pounds, equivalent to a billion dollars in today's currency. Sam Pa is the new Cecil Rhodes, a small Chinese man with a goatee beard who controls the 88 Queensway Group named after its headquarters in Hong Kong. He is reputed to have paid over $20 billion to unstable African dictators and is himself on the U.S. sanctions list. He has intimate relations with former presidents Dos Santos, Mugabe, Hugo Chavez and de Kirchner of Argentina. His companies, China Sonangol and China International Funds, have spread their tentacles all over Africa and beyond. The mysterious Sam Pa owns the J.P. Morgan building in New York, airlines in Tanzania, oil and gas fields in Indonesia, and interests in Côte d'Ivoire, North Korea, Nigeria, Mozambique, and Russia. His companies dominate the oil industry in Angola, which exports more oil to China than Kuwait and the UAE combined. Rwanda is best remembered for its hundred days of slaughter when Hutus killed 800,000 Tutsis in a rampage of genocide. Today, under Paul Kagame, the brilliant Tutsi general who emerged as leader, Rwanda is the star practitioner of the China way in Africa. Rwanda has been called the Singapore of Africa, with the least corruption, security of life and property, the cleanest cities, and the most business-friendly government. Like Lee's Singapore, Kagami runs a police state, rejects Western notions of democracy, and prefers to follow the Chinese government principles of merit and stability to ensure fast progress. And it has worked. Bill Clinton calls him one of the greatest leaders of our time. Hutus and Tutsis live in peace. 56% of his parliament members are women. A quarter of his budget is spent on education. He does not accept loans from the World Bank. Rwanda has a Chinese-speaking, Chinese-trained military brigade. Rwanda has less murders as a percentage of her population than the United States. Rwanda, one of the world's least corrupt countries, is the 15th fastest growing economy in the world. Rwanda's success raises the question, is the Chinese way a better solution to poverty than the democracy of the West?